Hello, it's uh, Adil Fazal bringing you a review of uh, the FTSE 100 from an intermarket analysis perspective, acting as a market analyst on behalf of uh, CFDs.com. Certainly do visit the website www.cfds.com or cfds.com for uh, your latest or up-to-date brokerage services. Uh, they have a spread betting and CFD accounts available for those that are wanting to trade or existing or obviously intermediate and even professional traders. Certainly visit the educational website to www.cfds.education to learn more. Okay, uh, now let's try and discuss the uh, the actual uh, FTSE 100. Uh, it, it is the month of Ramadan, so I have been very occupied and uh, very tired uh, due to the fasting, obviously uh, that occurs for almost 19 hours a day. So just trying to um, obviously uh, manage uh, in terms of trading and obviously uh, observing the month of Ramadan in terms of fasting. Okay, so uh, let's try and put things in perspective. So first of all, uh, the Asian markets. The Shanghai was, or the Chinese markets were negative overnight. The Nikkei was obviously relatively strong. The uh, European markets certainly finished uh, in, in an impressive fashion once again, except for the FTSE MIB. The, everything else was certainly was up quite substantially. Um, not substantially, but the FTSE itself did finish actually in the, in, in, in the positive. Okay, so let's uh, let's try and dissect the fundamentals. Okay, so going into the uh, the day, the uh, risk off scenario was China obviously down overnight, as we all know. The uh, the actual majority of the Chinese shares are obviously halted in terms of trading, or on the, on the short side anyway. Uh, obviously, they were able to uh, short them, uh, so exert the uh, equilibrium. So if they obviously is uh, no, if you're not allowed to sell and you can only buy, then obviously the market can go the wrong way, and that's not a uh, organic market. It's not a neutral market. It's not a natural market. So therefore, uh, just like when QE obviously uh, is enacted, uh, the market is distorted to a large extent. So you're unable to uh, dissect the actual bias in that particular market, uh, and uh, it's very hard to read as well. Okay, so the scenario there, obviously with regards to China, I think a few of the stocks, or quite a few of the stocks, were actually started trading again, and therefore that was negative. So therefore that was a risk-off scenario. Then we had the situation in terms of Greece, as we all know the. Uh, the fact that yes, they are, there is some sort of agreement in terms of the bailout, but they have to pass the law. And obviously, Mr. Cipras does need uh, does need a lot of support in order to do that as well. And there have been various reports throughout the day and over the last 24 to 48 hours with regards to a potential uh, um, hiccup or a, a, or a banana uh, a slip type event where. Obviously, he doesn't secure the majority, and he doesn't. He do, he, there, there is a um, basically a revolt, like it, uh, it has been uh, obviously uh, uh, documented or talked about. I mean, the uh, the headlines themselves coming out of Greece in terms of the actual uh, uh, unity, etc. I mean, let's just give you some headlines here. Okay. So basically, in terms of the politics themselves, just trying to get some uh, headlines in terms of the uh, the actual split. Uh, just trying to read here. Okay, I mean, you did have the Twitter as well, so I want to discuss the concept. Okay, so Greek lawmakers split over bailout of vote union lawmakers when Greece ruling to leave the party and their allies. Okay, so let's read this article here. I'll bring it across for you. Uh, the government on Tuesday submitted tough new bailout legislation to Parliament. Prime Minister Alex Tsipras pressing lawmakers to support reforms. Obviously, the uh, the, the support is, is being questioned uh, in terms of him having enough support. The bill specifies new taxes, pensions, reforms, tighter supervision of the government financing and sell for 50 billion. Again, that's the uh, the big sticking point: 50 billion euros worth of public sector assets. So, again, will that will law be passed supporting that? Very much doubt it. European critics are demanding parliamentary approval, etc., by Wednesday as a starting point for new negotiations. So again, given the fact that the uncertainty regarding the uh, the actual vote for this potential bailout, and given the fact that several leaders have obviously voiced their opposition, that itself creates uncertainty, uncertainty and creates fear, and I say risk of scenario. Uh, European leaders announce a new agreement, etc., etc. Elan analysts say new deal also aims to keep Greece in the nation. Uh, so here, here's a key uh, sticking point. So key. Several lawmakers have vowed to oppose the financial reforms, and some protests occurred in the streets of Athens. One protest set fire to a series of flags outside the president, outside the parliament. 
Many residents blame Grammy for demanding more austerity. They're, they are so inhumane, said one woman. They take no consideration of people's lives. Those who have reached an impasse who have committed suicide, children who are hungry, etc., etc. Uh, okay, so again, uh, the U-turn that Mr. Sipras and his series of party have done, etc. We will not permit for this game to go on when in a, demo in a uh, democracy, in the only country a democracy is born, the people who do not decide what some unelected official from Berlin decides. Okay, so as you can see, there's resentment and... Uh, so even though they've, uh, the, the theory is there, the actual act in itself, uh, the practicality remains. So that until that obviously is passed, and Mr. Sipras obviously gets a um, it gets enough of a majority, and obviously there are talks of a split and so on and so forth. So again, that's a potential negative scenario, negative type event, okay? And therefore one would presume or assume that that would be a risk-off scenario. So given the, given the fact that we've had such a stellar rally, and as you can see here, this is a chart of the French CAC, and you can see the um, the actual gaps that are being left behind. So you have a gap here, and you have a gap here. So it's 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 baffling as to the actual uh, um, the move or the extent of the move, the sheer extent of the move, should I say? Uh, the, it's actually quite impressive, but the sheer extent of the move in the opposite direction. I mean, we move from four thousand or four thousand six hundred all the way up to five thousand and thirty. I mean, it's almost four four hundred and fifty points. On what a potential bailout that yet Mr. Sipras has yet to confirm through Parliament. It certainly is circumspect and it's suspicious. But either way, the market is the market and I have to respect it. And a thrust higher with gaps, that gap, gap. So one gap higher, a second gap higher, and then obviously gap and go. And it has been quite impressive. But we certainly have closed the gap on the, uh, the CAC as well, as you can see there. Yeah, around that 5060 region so again that will be a solid solid resistance with regards to the European markets okay so the uncertainty regarding Greece then we had Mr Carney uh, in terms of Mr Carney talking up sterling so if I bring up a chart of sterling for you bear with me and I show you Mr Carney's uh, or the markets reaction to Mr Carney's comments obviously he was pro uh, well he's basically hawkish and uh, talking potentially talking up rates and a stronger sterling, as we all know, hurts exports and obviously, therefore, is negative for the FTSE 100. Let's bring up the chart of sterling here. There we go. So, as you can see on the day, we've had an impressive move higher. So, so from the morning or get go from nine o'clock, we've had quite an impressive move from 1.54 to 1.56, so almost a 200 point uh, rally on sterling. So, obviously, that's a negative. For the uh, the export side of the equation in terms of the FTSE 100, okay. So Mr. Uh, obviously Mr. Carney obviously being negative. There was some e uh, weaker uh, EU data as well, also weaker US data as well. Uh, and given the fact that the uncertainty from Greece, also obviously the Iran deal is supposed to be net net negative for the uh, the FTSE 100. Let's just bring up a chart of, of of food itself. We did bounce towards the uh, latter part of the session, but earlier on in the morning we were obviously quite. We were under pressure in terms of Brent. Also, bring up crude oil as well. Yes, we did manage to uh, amount a, a rally, but uh, we are selling off as we speak. But we, we had a low of 51 on oil. Obviously, we, we rallied up to 53 dollars, and uh, is certainly coming into resistance as we speak. So, the Iranian news obviously net net negative for the markets in terms of um, its uh, its interpretation. Uh, for the commodity sector, given the fact that there's going to be an increased supply of oil on the market, and therefore it's a negative scenario, and that obviously hurts the commodity side of the equation. Adding the fact that China obviously was down overnight as well, so that certainly adds to the uh, adds adds to the weight in terms of weakness. So you had Mr. Carney with hawkish, you had st uh, commodities under pressure, the Iranian uh, equation obviously involved, the Greek equation obviously in what involved, the Chinese equation involved, and also given the fact that you had weaker. US data and European data as well, and therefore overall net net negative. So, given the fact that the actual fundamentals are indicating negative, now let's bring up the chart of the FTSE 100 and let's try and see exactly where we've gone. Okay, so daily chart of the, or should we say weekly chart first of all? Weekly chart is an inside bar. The neg the uh, level at 6756, 6755 is a crucial, crucial level for the FTSE 100. Now, we did blast through the uh, previous support equals resistance at 6700. 6750 is the next level. If we do break above 6750, then obviously we are looking for a powerful short squeeze higher. Uh, again, very unlikely from my perspective. Daily chart obviously is into the 200 MA uh, itself, and the daily candle is obviously indicating a potential uh, reversal signal as well. 
it's a, it's not a very shooting star. It's a, it's, a, it's more like a hanging man type candle. Uh, so it's bringing sort of for you there with me. So it's a bullish, a bearish hanging man. So it's a hanging man candle that generally indicates a, a reversal on, on the cards. Now we have slammed into a 200 MA. We did actually break out this demo sloping, obviously uh, um, expanding wedge type pattern. Okay, so again, uh, I'm going to give it some time as to. Uh, or give it the benefit of the doubt for now okay so we do have this support level here although not very potent but certainly remains we have actually pushed above the this is quite impressive i mean if we took a bit of high so from flow we were actually into the fib 75 percent resistance as well so that's something to bear in mind so if we can remain below that weekly 6750 and obviously below this fib 75 then we certainly will be interesting in terms of the actual uh, uh, the market itself and looking for a potential reversal on the on the cards. Okay, so the daily chart certainly is indicating potential resistance, especially with the one, two, three, four, five bar thrust as well. Okay, so looking at potential reversal, potential resistance in terms of the market's interpretation. Now let's go to the 60 minute chart of the FTSE 100. Now we do have some important resistance levels on the FTSE. Now I was expecting a uh, a bear flag formation here after that bearish engulfing candle, pulse carny etc. and the market failed to obviously follow through given the fact that US markets ignored the weak retail sales data and actually decided whether or not they are front running Miss Yellen and decided to obviously push higher because they're expecting a potential dummy statement from her. So in terms of obviously rate hikes being delayed, etc. etc. So the market is obviously respecting 6760 resistance, 6770, and then obviously 6790 above. So there's the key resistance zones there. Okay, so the uh, 10 minute chart of the FTSE 100, we have resistance here at 6740 and 6744. Obviously, we broke above them, and the market certainly totally uh, neglected that uh, side of the, uh, the equation as well. Hmm, interesting scenario. So we did have a HNS formation as well today, and this is where I was stopped out on 6760 on the FTSE. Obviously, we had this right shoulder, and obviously the market was what was expected to move lower. That obviously didn't materialize. Okay, so again, 6740, 6745 were the two key resistance zones. Obviously, have been neglected for now. 60 minute chart is showing you that level at 6760 again is going to be key resistance. Again, the 6770 region will certainly come into play as well. Uh, now, I was expecting this throughout the day. I was expecting a, a, a key break of this, uh, obviously, uh, bullish channel. Uh, and given the fact, like I said, we had this H&S formation. So your left shoulder here, your head was here, bear flag scenario, and obviously down we go. That obviously has failed to materialize, given the fact that the market shrugged off Chinese weakness, shrugged off the commodity weakness, and uh, shrugged off the weak economic data as well, which, to my surprise, very impressive. Especially with regards to Mr. Carney being hawkish as well. That was certainly baffling from my understanding. But that's the market for you folks, okay? Now, if I actually cross-reference that with the FTSE 250, you, as you know, the weekly chart already remains a negative. The daily chart, again, a negative, given the fact that we had diagonal trend line resistance. Also, you've got horizontal resistance here as well. Previous support, weak of resistance here as well. So, again, there's key areas of resistance. The FTSE all share, again, diagonal trend line resistance again. For the uh, FTSE all share, so there's something that we're going to observe. Okie dokie. So again, key level of resistance. Again, hanging man candle. So again, these are levels of resistance. Previous support equals resistance as well in that particular zone. So that's something certainly to watch out for in terms of the FTSE 100. Now, looking at the actual volatility index for the FTSE itself, as you can see, the di the di diagonal trend line support is there. Horizontal support is there. The FTSE certainly has, uh, I mean, the volatility or fear index out of the FTSE itself certainly has you know, uh, collapsed very, very impressively. Uh, but that's the market for you folks, okay? So that's basically where we uh, we stand in terms of the uh, the actual market's interpretation of, uh, of the uh, events that unfold, okay? So from my perspective, the FTSE volatility index certainly isn't coming into support. The daily chart certainly is coming into resistance. Chinese markets uh, weakness has certainly been ignored. The Greek uh, obviously saga or the Greek carry on will continue into tomorrow, given the fact that a lot of the MPs are certainly uh, 
uh, vowing to uh, uh, resist. Okay, so again, that will be interesting to see how that law is passed. But the uncertainty and the fear will certainly grip the market, from my understanding and my interpretation. And there certainly is a sense of complacency in this market right now. Okay, folks, I think that's a, a wrap in terms of uh, the an analysis and insight. Be sure to visit www.cfds.com for uh, your trading needs, okay, and also the uh, the educational service as well, where I provide real time uh, chart and analysis and insight on various uh, obviously variables, indices, commodities. Uh, I also uh, do my analysis on uh, the forex market as well, and also the bond market. So certainly visit the uh, the actual website uh, for educational services as well, www.cfds.education. And uh, certainly be sure to open up an account with cfds.com. Take care. Goodbye.